Good morning, Internet, and uh, welcome to another installment of the Visual Studio Remote Office Hours. My name is Matt Cr Matt Christensen, and um, thank you so much for joining me here today, where we're going to learn about Git and working with Git source control in Visual Studio. And um, you know, nowadays with uh, all of us being uh, at home, team collaboration is super important, and it's changed its character. And so, having a great Git experience and source code experience is, uh, sorry, source control experience is uh, paramount. And so I'm super excited that we today have um, a couple of program managers from the uh, Git source control team within the Visual Studio organization to talk to us about what they've been working on. They have some really cool stuff. So um, let's just uh, see what they have to say and let's uh, move that into Taser. Good morning, Taser. Can you uh, give a brief uh, presentation of yourself. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Matt. So my name is Stacey. Uh, I have been working on the Git experience or the source control experience inside of Visual Studio for about a year now. And as uh, Matt uh, said, uh, we are very, very excited to start to talk about some of the new uh, uh, you know, features and functionalities that we have been uh, working hard on. So this is a very fun and exciting time for us. Awesome. And Pratik. Hey, hey. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Pratik, and I also work on the Visual Studio team along with Mads and Taysir. I joined the uh, Git team, the version control team specifically with Taysir a little bit later than he did a few months ago. I've been working uh, on the Git mm -hmm. features and super excited to uh, revamp the entire Git experience in Visual Studio and add more GitHub integration features as well uh, into Visual Studio to make your GitHub and Git experience super easy and convenient. Awesome. So that's really cool. I can't uh, I can't uh, not notice, Pratik, that your uh, home office, uh, I presume your living room or something like that, it looks very much like one of those backgrounds from, uh, you know, teams that you can inject as like that clean, white, perfect, yeah, yeah, I that was totally unintentional, but like I do have a, a nice plant up here and like uh, it is it is a white background. I have to keep my blinds closed because otherwise there's too much glare. So there's a, always that problem, that white balance that uh, I, I kind of have to face, <laughs> but uh, hopefully it looks good. Yeah, yeah, I like I like your like setup too. Uh, it looks it looks more organic, more real. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's actually staged. I have I put up paper on the in the windows here to block some of the light. But I just got a new camera, so I used to have just the camera in my laptop. But what you were saying, like with the white balance and all this sort of stuff, was just completely off. It couldn't handle it. So I got like a cheap no-name cameras because all the, the web cameras are sold out, like Amazon, Best Buy, you name it, anywhere. And so, but there are still some of those no-name brands. So I got one, and it's much much better than what I had in just my laptop. So uh, it's also wider, so you can see more of my messy garage. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that's how it is. So just a reminder to the people online right now who are live. Uh, we do have a Q&A panel. So if you look in your browser or in Microsoft Teams, you can see a Q&A is available. And so please ask any questions you've got to Taysher and Pratik or myself about working with Git or GitHub within Visual Studio and uh, or, or any other Visual Studio questions for that matter. We can uh, probably answer uh, a bunch of those too. So with that out of the way, I'm curious to know, uh, let's start with you, Tasia. What is some of the new stuff? What is it that you've been working on? Yeah, so we, there were, you know, uh, and towards the end of last year, uh, we, you know, we started to discover that uh, actually the, you know, the, the previous experience that we had uh, in, or we had in, in, in uh, Visual Studio was first of all not very discoverable to uh, lots of our Visual Studio users. So we would talk to uh, folks and say, well, well, what do you think about the Git uh, functionality, functionality inside of uh, Visual Studio? And they'll say, you know, what Git functionality, right? So that was a, a big aha moment for all of us here. So discoverability was a big thing. And then we got also a significant amount of feedback about user experience and the amount of clicks uh, that is needed to execute specific functions. 
uh, also having to switch between different pages to be able to follow a specific Git flow. Uh, so in Team Explorer, for example, we had changes, we had uh, sync, and then we have the branches uh, pages, and users had to jump between all of those pages to be able to do their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, Git functionality. So the like those were the two things that actually you know made us pause and and take a step back and um you know think about you know the new experience um and that is you know uh, for example one of the main new things that we have introduced is the top level get menu um and that that is really great because that enhances the discoverability of the get features and that is a great uh, add-on for keyboard users now because using Alt G, you can very quickly get to that menu and then access, you know, the different Git tooling or the different Git functionalities that we have, for example, right? Um, yeah, so that is one of the things that uh, we added uh, specifically to address that feedback. And then we added other features into the product also um, to uh, address the user experience uh, feedback that we got as well. For example, the Git tool window is a is a is an example there. It's a it's a lightweight uh, experience designed for the inner loop, where you can very quickly you know code and then stage commit, uh, push your changes without introducing any context switching in that case. Right? So, let me just ask a question here. So so I've heard people talking about the inner loop. I've heard that before. Like. It's something that we talk about at Microsoft, but um, what is the inner loop and why, like, why does it matter and, and why do we care? What is it that we're talking about when we say inner loop? Yeah, so the inner loop is, is really important uh, uh, piece for, you know, because it is, it is the flow that you go through uh, on a daily basis as a, as a developer, right? So any uh, enhancements we introduce into that uh, flow will end up, you know, with a, a bigger impact uh, on your, you know, daily, weekly, monthly uh, performance as a developer, right? And it is a goal for all of us here uh, in Visual Studio to make sure that we focus on the inner loop to enhance the day-to-day -day experience for our developers, right? Um, so when we talk about inner loop and, and Git specifically, we are talking about uh, you know, the steps that you, that a developer would need to do uh, while they're coding, right? If you are uh, fixing a bug or if you are working on a new feature. So in that case, you would need to, you know, uh, write your, uh, write your code, start staging and then committing and pushing, uh, doing all of those functions, right? So we consider those to be a part of your inner loop experience. Okay. Well, that makes, that makes good sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To add to that as well. Um, Navigation was uh, a big pain point that we observed in, in, in users, and that was affecting their inner loop, as Taysir mentioned. You would have to navigate between different windows in Team Explorer and the other Git pages and version control pages that we had in Visual Studio. And uh, users complained about that, right? There was a big learning curve in understanding how to use Git functionality, and it was taking away time from actually coding and developing, uh, which is what uh, we want developers to be focused on when they're using Visual Studio. So uh, to simplify all of those experiences was one of our main goals and to streamline that into a single window that developers could use on the side and not get distracted from um, when they're actually coding and doing their day-to-day -day work. And this is supposed to be a, a very um, intuitive sort of add-on to that. All right, so this makes, this makes a lot of sense. So I assume that, you know, all you said that there was a lot of feedback from uh, users about not being able to find the Git tooling. They didn't even know that, that we had Git tooling in Visual Studio, but that the tooling we also had was not inefficient, was not good enough. And so I assume they just kind of didn't use it and instead used um, either the command line. And I know that, you know, for instance, GitHub has like their own client. So if you work on GitHub, you could use the desktop client or there, there are other products out there. Is that what people did? And then how did you then find out? How did you approach them and ask them about this? How do you know all this information, I guess? Uh, my question is. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I guess uh, the answer there, the short answer is yes, uh, a, good, a good number of, uh, of uh, Visual Studio users uh, relied on other uh, Git tooling to do their Git 
JavaScript work, uh, including the command line and other visual tools like you know Git Kraken uh, and GitHub uh, Desktop, as you mentioned. Uh, but we also had some uh, Team Explorer users, right? That we we kept talking uh, to and get feedback from, right? Um, so it, it it has always been a combination of users using different tools for us, right? And sometimes when it comes to Git. Our users tend to use, um, you know, a, a number of, of tools together. Uh, what was also interesting for for us to see is that a number of our users were also relying on uh, Visual Studio Code to do some of their Git uh, Git work, uh, which is something that we have noticed um, because you know they had Visual Studio Code had a, a lighter experience, um, which is a little bit more streamlined than what we had before. So is it is it fair to say that we are the approach you've taken is to maybe take the best bits of of what was successful from VS Code and the best bits of what was in GitHub Desktop client or and take you know merge all those best parts into Visual Studio. How did you come up with what the right approach is? Well, uh, not only that, uh, Matt. It's not only the best bits, but because other tools also have. Uh, may have issues and problems that um, are that they don't know about, and we need to discover, and we need to kind of create a better tool. And uh, and this comes to like a part that I love doing as a program manager in Microsoft is we talk to customers, right? We talk to a lot of customers. Uh, we have a user experience lab um, back in Redmond when when we all used to still work uh, out of the office in Redmond. But in Building 16, we have a great user experience lab where, where we bring customers in. Um, developers of Visual Studio, developers who use other tools, um, very experienced developers, completely new developers who are just starting out in their careers. And we, 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 we ask them questions. We sit them in front of us and we ask them questions about how they work, um, what they do, what makes sense to them, what doesn't make sense to them. We show them prototypes of our features. We show them working bits of stuff that we're just starting to work with. Um, and we ask them to like, you know, take steps and do tasks and we watch them, observe them. And we learn a lot from seeing them and um, not just the questions that they answer, but just, you know, the, the expressions that they make and kind of when they, when they try to use a tool and, and are stuck and confused, you can really see that sense of frustration on their face. And that's what we want to avoid. And that's what we want to help eliminate. And we learn a lot from these micro interactions uh, that the customers have with these tools. Um, today, in the in the climate that we have today, we can't really go to the lab and bring users to the lab. So we do remote studies, right? Um, we we join Teams calls with with customers um, all throughout the day. Uh, we have some scheduled for today itself. Actually, right after this, uh, we have uh, customers coming in and joining us on the call, and we're going to show them. Um, what we have in Visual Studio, the tooling in Visual Studio, as well as, as prototypes and mockups of new things that we're kind of working on, and we get their feedback. And we use this to kind of direct uh, our our vision and our designs, not just what other tools have and the best of other tools, but like new things that we can come up with and show to uh, customers and users. Yeah. So if to elaborate here a little bit, like what right. you know, what what Pratik was trying to say here. Is that we are trying to build uh, a first class Git experience inside of Visual Studio, right? By talking to customers and doing all of those activities that Pratik has been talking about. So that that has has been my uh, our goal uh, to say here. Okay, so so the that's really cool. So you want to build the best possible Git experience inside Visual Studio. So I guess that also assumes that. Well, I will then assume that you are saying, in a perfect world, with no knowledge of what the constraints might have been architecturally and whatnot in Visual Studio, what is the pinnacle, the best possible Git experience that we can provide to our users in their Visual Studio inner loop, in their workflow, and uh, start from there? Is that how you started it, or or did you start more constraint? And 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 if you had those constraints, what would they be. Yeah, so so that is actually a good point, right? So in our uh, first user studies that we did, we discovered that there there were when it comes to Git uh, in general, there are two types of activities for users, right? Those inner loop activities that users would need to do while they're coding, and there are those uh, other activities that users don't like. They need to focus on, right? And when they are not actually coding, but when they are 
browsing, managing their repos, right? Uh, so the approach that we took here is to start by focusing on the inner loop and then slowly expand into uh, the other, you know, uh, richer, uh, more focused Git experiences that would require more real state and uh, require more interaction with users. Okay. So, um, I've used Git for many years. I have like, I think 250 open source GitHub repositories. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that where I'm, I'm a little weird is I've always kind of been afraid of Git. I've always kind of been not wanting to do feature branches. I commit directly to master and I only have one branch. And that's been how I've been working all along. And so when I take a pull request, I take it and merge it straight into master. I don't rebase, I don't do any of that sort of stuff. Uh, if I get a pull request that uh, needs to rebase because it, that there's merge conflicts, I ask the pull request D to, to do that on their side before I can take it. That has worked okay for me, but I also know that it's, it's, a, it's a rather limiting thing because I don't do these feature branches. I don't have release branches. I'm, I'm missing out on a bunch of sort of automations I can do. I'm fully aware of that. But my fear has been just, you know, another merge conflict and another uh, headache. Now I need to read up on like Git command line because I knew the Visual Studio tooling, but I guess I didn't know about it, but I, I feel, felt like the Visual Studio tooling back then didn't, was not gonna help me in, in these advanced cases. So um, that was sort of where I came from. And um, I've been playing around with, with the newest uh, Git tooling for the last, like a lot in the last couple of weeks, especially, but also a little bit before that. And uh, I'm resolving merge conflicts now that, you know, I would never do, I, I would never do that. I was afraid of that before. And now I'm just, I'm merging them. I'm doing feature branches. I'm doing all this sort of stuff. And I, I can't believe, like, if that has been possible the whole time that I've never done it before, but now you've wrapped it up in a, in a, such an easy, thing to do, right? It's, it's such a pleasure to do. It feels natural. I don't have to guess on how to do things. I don't have to go read documentation on how to use Git command line or, or the Visual Studio tooling that you've built for me now. And so it's, it's like, it's like a whole world opening up. And <laughs> so first of all, thank you so much. Uh, but second of all, if, if anyone listening out there, you're in the same boat as me, where you're not like super confident using Git, try out the new tooling. So the Git top level menu that they're talking about, um, but also the tool window and all the features in there. Uh, that is just, that's just an absolute pleasure. So thank you so much. Is, is this available to everyone? Because I, I'm on internal builds. I get sort of the latest and greatest, you know, from our daily builds. We have like five daily builds and I, I get them all almost. Uh, so how do people get this? Can they do this today? Like if you, if you're listening to us right now and you open Visual Studio, do you have it? Pratik? Yeah, uh, sure. So the, well, it depends. The answer to your question is it depends. You may have it, you may not have it. Um, we uh, are right now in preview for the Git uh, functionality. All this new, the new Git experience is in the preview channel of Visual Studio. So if you are, have downloaded and installed Visual Studio 2019 preview um, and are on the latest uh, version of that, so uh, 16.6 onwards, you will get uh, the this Git functionality. Um, it is not yet in the release channel, and uh, we want to get there. We want to get there soon um, to be able to provide a complete Git experience to everyone using um, Visual Studio, the public version, and uh, and we want to get there soon. But we are we're we're working hard. The entire team is working super hard to uh, to reach a point where we can say yes, we're confident that all our customers, all our users, whatever they want to do with Git, they can do it in Visual Studio. They can they can uh, do their inner loop. They can commit, stage, stash, push, pull, make branches, solve merge conflicts. Uh, we want them to be able to do all of those core features within Visual Studio, and we're slowly building that up. And while we build it up, we don't want to GA and say, hey, everyone use it in uh, the public channel. We're slowly um, testing it out and making sure we're building the right experience with our preview channel customers. So if you are on Visual Studio Preview, you can get this experience um, under a feature flag. So all you have to do is go to Tools Options and in Environment, there is a Preview Features pane. And there you'll see all of the new um, 
the latest features of Visual Studio that aren't available to the public um, directly yet. And uh, all you have to do, there's a checkbox for new Git experience. And if you check that box, you'll switch from your old uh, uh, previous Team Explorer view of version control to this new Git experience view. You'll, the Git tool uh, window will light up, the Git top level menu will light up, and you'll be able to use these features. All right, that's awesome. Uh, I will say that before you rolled out this, um, I would say rather elaborate change, it's, it's a big change, it feels big, it feels significant. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one thing that I for many years asked for <laughs> that never came, which was I want to I want to have a keyboard shortcut to do a pull from a from let's say a git from github let's say so um, the typical scenario would be I would come into uh, I would open a repo that I haven't had open for quite a while and I knew that I've had taken pull requests for it or maybe I would not be sure if if there were new pull requests that had come in in the meantime and so I didn't know if I had the latest so I would like to be able to without opening Team Explorer at the time this was before the git tool window. The team explorer tool window. I had to like manually go in and say pull to get the latest or sync, and uh, I would like that to be just a keyboard shortcut. And so what happened in Visual Studio 2019? I think the first version of 2019. So not even in an update, but and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Taser. I don't know if if you were the one that did it, but I'm super happy that you made that into a command that I could bind to a keyboard shortcut, and I could also so I wrote an extension as well that automatically. Did it so whenever you open a solution, it would automatically update all your branches. Like it would, all, I think it did a fetch or something like that on your various branches that you've got. So you were always kind of at the tip uh, when you started your day opening Visual Studio. And so um, that was like just a game changer for me. It, I, I that meant that I didn't come to these um, situations where I had merge conflict, right? Because oh, I forgot to do a pull and I just made a change and now I can't merge that thing in and all that sort of stuff. So uh, this seemed, this whole notion of like improving the Git tooling seems to have started like actually quite a while back. This is not something new. Is that is that a correct assumption? Yeah, that that is right. So some of the, the works has, you know, started some time ago, uh, including what you mentioned. And I also know that uh, there were some work uh, that has been done on the stash functionality. Stash wasn't there before, and that was added based on customer requests and feedback. So that's that's totally accurate. Yep. All right. So we got a question here from uh, Jerome. He's uh, he says I've been trying to use the new Git tooling, but since the Team Explorer, that's the tool window, Team Explorer, is disabled, and there's no Show Solutions and Show Folder View, I've disabled it. I'm frequently closing solutions and finding the active solution through the MRU is easy to work with. What is that? Is that something that you're looking into? What is that problem he's talking about here? Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, we have been getting a lot of feedback about the uh, repos list and the solution list. Those were features in Team Explorer uh, that uh, we initially took out and that's why we started from kind of a um, a methodology or an, um, a viewpoint of let's start simple. Let's let's not add on a whole bunch of features in the beginning, but as we build up this Git experience, let's start with the very simple basic features. And as required, we'll add on features and add on functionalities and capabilities where they make the most sense. And if we get feedback from users that, oh, we we were like the, the team in Visual Studio was, was not completely correct in their first assumption that this is not a necessary feature, right? And so their list of solutions um, and the list of repositories is something that we've been hearing feedback on from Team Explorer users to say that this is uh, something that they're used to seeing. And we do have some workarounds for that. So you can see your list of solutions once you've selected a repository and um, you can see your list of solutions in um, the MRU that you have in the start window in Visual Studio uh, 2019. You can see your recent solutions that you've opened in the, um, file recent projects and solutions view. Uh, you can also, once you've opened up a folder in Solution Explorer, 
you can switch views to see your recent solutions in the folder view it's, uh, itself in um, Solution Explorer. So there are a few different ways where you can see your solution list um, within Visual Studio uh, once you've selected a repository. So we do have those workarounds and we're trying to see if, if those are sufficient workarounds to, because I understand that it's completely a muscle memory and you kind of, you kind of expect a design and once, you, once you've, you've, you're used to that design, you kind of expect to see it there. And switching to something new is always hard, right? It, um, whenever an app that I use changes its UI, I get like, wait, where is everything? So um, it's definitely something that we want to help make easier and change management um, when we change UI on, on developers and users is, has, is always something that we're concerned about and looking for. So um, we, we don't want to rashly bring in a solution list anywhere, somewhere that, uh, that may not make sense to the overall goal of the design. And so we're trying to be very deliberate about um, how we bring features in. And so it will come, it's definitely, uh, we definitely have an eye on it. And uh, these features that we're missing, uh, please give feedback. You can go to um, uh, our developer community where we have a lot of suggestion tickets um, and different features that users have requested. So if you go to aka.ms slash bsfeedback, uh, that's where you'll see our all our suggestions and you can create a suggestion or even vote on the suggestions there and that helps us prioritize what are the most important things for you thanks that's for awesome. asking that yeah. yeah that was a great question and a great answer um thank you Pratik. so uh, it, it kind of illustrates a, a funny funny kind of thing about visual studio is that i've never myself um i've been using visual studio for like several decades and i've never used team explorer to open solutions I've always used the file recent solutions in through there. I used to use the start page when we had that. Start window is also good. Um, but it kind of illustrates like people just have different ways that are natural for them. And the funny thing is that oftentimes when we get suggestions coming in through the mechanisms that Pratik was just mentioning, uh, people think that it's, for them, it might be the most important feature in the whole world. And, and very few other people feel the same because they have a different workflow. And so it's actually hard for us to prioritize without a very large sample size of people to kind of figure out uh, the, the priority of these different things. Uh, so I guess that's just a sort of an anecdote to throw in there. Uh, uh, but I guess that illustrates also uh, why we don't have that solution view. The people that you talked to didn't have a strong opinion about having those out there, but some people will just like Jerome that asked the question. So that's, this is fantastic. And this is why we do the preview features, by the way, such that we get to test it in the wild uh, to mm -hmm. get a much bigger sample size and, and broader set of feedback. Mm -hmm. So here's another question. This is from Larry. When will the Git global settings be integrated into the standard VS options? Tejer? Yeah, so actually uh, that is work in progress. That's a good question. So actually now we have the, the general settings uh, already integrated into uh, VS, uh, VS's options uh, and we are work in progress to finish the work on the repo settings, right? Uh, so that's definitely coming in. And an entry point to that would be, uh, you know, the top level get menu and then you will have settings there. So if you click on settings, that will take you automatically to, to that page. All right. Well, so that's good news, Larry. And everyone who wants that, uh, it's coming. Uh, so Tasia, in the beginning, you were talking about like discoverability problems, uh, that people didn't know that we had Git toolings. So for the people that did know that we had and used the Git tooling that was there, did they ask for features that they, that, that we already had, but was kind of hard to find, or they just, for some reason, didn't know we had. Like, I think the office team had like some issues with that back in the day, and that led to the ribbon to expose more of the features they already had. And, and, and was that the same case here for, for us? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, a good example that you mentioned today is the merge uh, experience, right? We always had uh, a, a great merge uh, experience inside of Visual Studio that is rich uh, in functionality, but few, few folks knew about that uh, because an entry point to that was a little bit hidden, wasn't very discoverable. So uh, even though we have, like we have, we have started to enhance the, that experience actually, but even before we started to do that, like we started to get uh, feedback 
Facebook saying that, wow, thank you guys. This is a great merge. This is a great new merge experience. And we already had that before. So the, the work that we have been doing to enhance the discoverability helped and, you know, um, and make it easier for folks to find the existing merge tooling that, that we already had into the product. Uh, and that is something that we started to focus more on and, uh, and just to make sure that we, you know, keep enhancing it. So more and more enhancements are going to be coming in uh, very soon for the merge resolution experience. Very cool. So, um, you know, I'm doing a lot of work with GitHub and I expect a lot of the uh, viewers also work with GitHub um, repos uh, on a regular basis. And so is there is there anything in the new tooling that's specific to GitHub? Because so far, I think we just talked about Git in general. And so any any remote uh, that supports Git will work, including GitHub and others. Um, but is there anything that's specific to GitHub? I think that's interesting now that, you know, GitHub is, is a Microsoft thing now. And so um, so what do you got for us there? Yeah, so 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 one, one thing we have there is the new init and push functionality, where now very quickly with the single click, you can not only initialize lo your local code, but we, we do a bunch of steps for the user. So we initialize their local uh, repo, we create a, a new GitHub repository on their behalf, and then there we push their code into that repo. So once once that is that's a significant uh, shortcut that we introduced uh, in that new feature and uh, the feedback we have been getting so far is very positive there because like the 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 previous workflow was if, if you already have code locally and you need to to push that code to GitHub you would need to go manually to GitHub create your new repository there and then get the URL go back to your uh, local repo. And then, you know, add the remote and push, push your code. So lots of, you know, steps there to do for the user manually. And we have automated that, uh, flow end to end. So that is, that is one example that we have, uh, been working on, um, mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And, uh, another example as well. Um, and I don't know how many, uh, people know of this feature or if it's, uh, if, it, if it has been very discoverable is uh, the ability to clone GitHub repository straight from Visual Studio. So you can not only clone a repository using a, a URL or an SSH um, uh, format, but you can uh, also browse your GitHub repositories. If you've signed in uh, to Visual Studio with a GitHub account on your keychain, then uh, when you go to clone a repository, you can also browse um, through your GitHub uh, repositories and it understands your authentication and just shows you a list of all the all the repositories that you have as well as your organization has um under um under that one single list you can also search different repositories click on them and with a single click uh then that repository will be cloned down so when you want to get started with code um if it's uh, either way you have existing code um on github um and you want to bring that down or if you're starting with a new project and you want to push it to github those are the flows that we started off with making super easy to to get started um and um just to get started working uh with their code and we're going to start making more inner loop as as we mentioned earlier actions um in github a lot more convenient and intuitive also so that's on the roadmap sweet so um so a lot more uh GitHub specific integration. That sounds that sounds great. Uh, I'm a big GitHub fan myself and have been for many years, even before the the acquisition. So, so it's an authentic authentic thank you, not a corporate thank you. And uh, you know, so that's great. Um, I've been using that to publish uh, some GitHub repos. And even though I could do that before with the GitHub extension for Visual Studio, now it's all it's all sort of within that same workflow of setting up your Git repository. You immediately just go to Git. Uh, start to GitHub and and you don't even think twice about it. It just it just works. It's fantastic. So, um, is, has any of this been in collaboration with GitHub? Is there any like since we're now part of the same family? Is there a a bigger push on on like improving sort of the GitHub integration? How does all that work, Tasher? Yeah. So we have you know we started to uh, work. Uh, more closely with the GitHub team to enhance, uh, you know, our Git tooling inside of the, the product itself. Uh, and there are, you know, based on what 
Pritik has uh, just said, we are, you know, we are, there are still a lot to do uh, there. So we are just, you know, since we discovered that we had this, uh, these issues, discoverabilities or experience in, into our Git tooling and functionality, we had to, st to take the step back to uh, rebuild or uh, uh, revamp the Git experience, the basics in Visual Studio. And then from there, the plan is to continuously to add new features uh, into it, right? A very popular example is the, the, is the pull, pull request integration into Visual Studio. So that is something that we have started to work on last year and we had to pause our work there uh, for so that we can revamp the basics and then the plan is to get back to that, right? Um, that is just an example that uh, we, we have been working closely with uh, GitHub uh, for or on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, as Taysir mentioned, the, the GitHub extension for Visual Studio, we've had some questions about like what's what's going to happen with that extension, right? Um, if we're building functionality into Visual Studio and and there are a lot of good features um, in that extension. Um, if you haven't tried it out, um, you definitely should. There's uh, the pull request functionality, there's forking, um, and uh, a lot of it uh, we want to get into and um, inbuilt in Visual Studio but uh, we're not there yet. So uh, you can continue to use the GitHub extension and as we, as we build more features in Visual Studio, uh, we'll, try to, um, we'll try to create a fully functional GitHub experience um, inside of the product itself. Uh, the, some of the other features um, are, trying to, are also like opening um, code uh, from github.com. So if you have, and we've been speaking with the GitHub team about this, is if you're, if you're browsing github.com and if you're on the browser and you want to open and you see a, a repo uh, that you want to maybe clone down and um, start working on, then uh, you can, with a click, when you try to clone it, instead of just cloning it and then having it clone down and then um, doing that maybe through the terminal or the command line, and then you have to open the IDE or editor of your choice and then open, find that repo and then open it in the IDE. You can, um, in a single click, just open in Visual Studio. So that will launch Visual Studio, um, start the cloning the repository, and it'll open it for you in the product itself. So that's also one of the features, uh, that's a great feature of the extension that uh, is on our roadmap to get into Visual Studio as well. Yeah, I was just about to say, we already, we already did that like some years ago, right? There's, mm -hmm. if you have the extension and you've used it with mm -hmm. GitHub, then that menu item shows up on GitHub that you can clone with Visual Studio or open in Visual Studio. Open in Visual Studio, yeah, that's a feature of the extension. And, and we worked extensively with the, um, with the GitHub team in order to create that uh, functionality. It was a lot of collaboration uh, between us and them. And that was, that was before the acquisition. So that was pre-acquisition times and stuff. Okay, so are there any features that um, you you already know now that you're not going to do going forward, like either features that the, the Visual Studio extension for GitHub already had or other features that maybe other clients have that you feel like they don't really belong in Visual Studio or, or something to that effect, Tejer? Hmm, that, that is a very good <laughs> question. Um, we always think about, you know, the features that we miss. Um, yeah, and then we we are you know actively working on this, so we continuously you know focus on the user feedback. Uh, so you know going back to what Pritik said earlier, please 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 you know continue to use the new Git functionality and provide your uh, feedback suggestions. We continuously monitor those. Uh, actually, uh, we have lots of Git requests, so our uh, like. Our suggestions and feedback has always been, you know, full of things that it's it's not us not wanting to implement those. It's just you know prioritizing and figuring out you know uh, where we should start. Uh, for example, um, you know a very popular request that we still haven't had the chance to get into is multi repo support. Um, but in in order for us to be able to provide a great uh, experience there, we need to have a, a solid base first. So you know some of some of those you know suggestions and feedback we have been you know uh, pausing uh, the work on uh, just to make sure that we are starting or have the you know the right foot in uh, to be able to build that functionality, right? And so we will continue to. Do our best to prioritize and figure out, you know, um, what makes sense uh, implementation-wise and from our users' uh, point of view to start to work on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'd I'd say that 
nothing is uh, uh, is thrown out or everything is game still. Uh, we haven't said that we're not going to do not do anything yet. It's all a question of, uh, it's, and it's a classic engineering problem. You have a limited amount of time, scope, um, and uh, effort that you can put into something. And so it's all about prioritization. And that's why, again, suggestions and developer community and interacting with the, with the entire developer community is is super important for us to understand um, because we're go we're going to keep building um, and it's it's going to be a long journey and we're going to keep doing it as 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 much as we have uh, the time to so um, the more you tell us uh, as uh, as an audience and as our customers uh, the the better we'll get it wow that's fantastic to hear so nothing is off the table anything can happen uh, and basically the users guide the show right they Make the suggestions, uh, you know, prioritize it, comment on it, vote on it, mm -hmm. uh, and that helps you prioritize and maybe get to things faster than you would have otherwise because you're realizing mm -hmm. there's a priority over here that is now greater mm -hmm. than this other thing you thought you were going to work on. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely fantastic to hear. So, um, are there any of those big ticket items that you are very excited to start working on that you don't have it yet, but you know, you're almost ready to start it. And, and what would those features be? What is, is there a theme to them or is it like a little bit of everything? What do you got? What do you got coming for us? Yeah. So, um, so that's an interesting question. And, and, uh, so for example, uh, this, uh, one of the main feedback points that we have been getting into, uh, this new Git functionality that we are introducing was on branch management. So on our tool window, we introduced a very lightweight branch management, which is not uh, up to um, you know the functionality that we used to have on Team Explorer before. So uh, I'm happy to say that we you know we are taking all of the feedback into consideration, and that is one of the main things that we are starting to look into. And based on our uh, studies before, uh, actually branch management belongs to the focused experience, right? So uh, right now we are starting to focus on like building that uh, focused experience, which is more of the, you can think of that as your repo management or you repo explore. It's where you'll be able to do, you know, a rich branch management uh, navigation. You'll be able to see uh, a graph of your repo. So that is something that we are starting to uh, look into and work on. So we are very, very excited to, uh, you know, start to share uh, bits and pieces there uh, very soon. All right, that's cool. So branch management. Um, so what, what does that mean? I can create branches. I can switch to branches or check out branches. I guess is the right terminology. Uh, delete. Like, is that is that sort of what you're talking about, or, or what does it entail? Uh, actually, we already have those uh, lightweight functions that you mentioned in, uh, as a part of our inner loop uh, experience. So today you can very quickly create a new branch. Uh, we have different entry points. The top level Git menu is one. Uh, you can do that from the, uh, the Git tool window as well. Um, so we already have that functionality, but I'm talking about the uh, richer experiences uh, that we have been getting, you know, uh, lots of requests on, including, you know, the, the ability to, you know, delete multiple branches at the same time, or, you know, the ability to visualize and look at your, your repo uh, in a rich perspective or a rich way. Uh, and, you know, those, those things, you know, uh, we discovered that we need to build like a focused experience for. Uh, so that is going to be a base for all of these rich experiences, right? And uh, as you know, as the more we build, the the more functionalities we will be integrating there, uh, richer experiences that users have been asking us for. And uh, pull request is one of those experiences, right? Uh, for example, interactive rebase is is another experience that we will be able to benefit uh, by having that larger real state uh, to you know, build and make sure that it is, you know, functional, it is usable. Um, yeah. Sweet. So <clears throat> that's very interesting. The the pull request thing you also mentioned here at the end. Um, you know, one of the problems I have with pull requests is I always, whenever I get a pull request, I always go to GitHub and look at it in the browser, and it's so and that that works okay, but it's not a very rich experience. And what I really like 
is to be able to actually just run the program with those changes from the pull request. Maybe run the unit test. Just make sure everything works. Uh, see it in action before I uh, before I merge that PR. And um, I don't really get that when I do it in the browser. And you know, so I, I will be the first to admit. And I I don't know if I'm alone in this, but I have I have merged pull requests before that I kind of didn't know if they would fully work. I wasn't sure about the quality of them. Uh, this uh, this doesn't happen that rarely, <laughs> to be quite honest. Uh, so is that something that you're going to be able to help me out with so I can do like a <clears throat> a more holistic view of that pull request in the full context of like it's running, the app is running, there's a database underneath, um, all that sort of stuff. Where are we with that? Yeah, so that 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 is uh, some of the stuff that we have started to work on last year, and we had to pause. Uh, but then the plan is to make that a part of this uh, focused experience, right? So um, we found out that you know it, it's 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 really you know when it comes to pull requests, you have two experiences: you have the author experience, and you have the reviewer experience, right? So like we will uh, look into into those two experiences as soon as we are done with our basics. Uh, so, for example, the author experience, uh, Mads here. Imagine that you have created a, a new pull request, right? Uh, and then you are waiting for feedback from your colleagues, right? So, um, you know, today we know that there is lots of context switching happening for the author trying to switch between the browser and the editor or the IDE to basically bring in the feedback as they go through you know, the feedback. So that's one thing. And then you also mentioned the reviewer experience is something that uh, we looked at and we will continue to look at, which is basically about like making it easier to you know, uh, run the code pieces that you are reviewing uh, into your IDE which is something that you cannot do uh, on a browser today. So those two experiences, you know, are things that we'll, we'll look at uh, for sure. All right, so it sounds like uh, um, they've already been on the drawing board and they will get back on and development will continue in the future at some point. So that's great to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are, we are getting closer to um, the end here. So for those of you online, uh, Please ask any question you might have to Tasier and Pratik here. Um, we also have a question. So the very first question we actually got in here was not about uh, it's not about Git or GitHub, uh, but just a general revision studio question. So those are fine too, but that's why uh, I haven't brought it up, but I will bring it up now. Um, and then maybe get uh, Tasier and Pratik's take on this question as well. So this is from uh, this is Martin. That's my old colleague from back in the day before I joined Microsoft. Hello, Martin. Uh, he uh, asks, when do you think developers will stop installing ReSharper? Visual Studio has gotten a lot better, and ReSharper replaces or hides default functionality. So long-time ReSharpers still think VS lacks a lot of features. That is a that is a good question. <clears throat> what do you guys think? Huh? Mm. That's, <laughs> I mean, it's a good question. Like, uh, discoverability uh, is is always an issue, and ReSharper is one of our one of our partners, and uh, it does have a uh, they do have a lot of great features, and we do have a, a team. Our our .NET team, our C Sharp team, has been continuously working on um, adding uh, more features that um, that help uh, a user in their development state when they're editing code and um, um, and working on their on, on their applications, but yeah, I we don't have a timeline on. We can't say if, if a developer is going to actually stop when a developer wants to stop using ReSharper, right? It's it's up to it's up to your preference and up to up to what you're used to and uh, what you want to use. If uh, if you want to really see what Visual Studio is capable of, I'd suggest try turning it off for a bit. Like you can disable an extension pretty easily and um, and see what Visual Studio has and try using it without ReSharper for for a little while and um, and see what's missing still and if and if that's really necessary for your development experience and and the trade off that you get of using ReSharper and not using ReSharper. Um, so I just say give it a try and um, and and let us know what you think. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. We 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 hear from people all the time. You know, 
that you know they fall in two camps. They 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 try to disabling it, and some people are like, whoa, I didn't know Visual Studio could do that. They haven't they haven't used Visual Studio without Resharper for like a decade. Yeah. So they were not aware of what features are actually now in the product. And then you have the other hand, people that are like, hey, I you know I don't want to use Visual Studio without Resharper. Those features are just super important. I tried to disable it, and it just didn't work for me. And you know. There's no right answer. Like that's whatever makes you happy, and that goes for any extension. Like there's, um, I think there's over 4,000 extensions now for Visual Studio 2019 alone. Over 10 or 11,000 for all of Visual Studio in the history of Visual Studio. Uh, so like they're there because they're personal preferences, and so um, we want to make sure that you're happy, you feel more, most productive. One thing we do know is that the more you personalize and customize your Visual Studio experience, the happier you are with Visual Studio. And so that includes extensions, includes settings that you set, your window layout, um, a whole bunch of things. This theme, maybe you customize your theme. It Keyboard shortcuts, like you can customize those as well. Um, so the more you tailor that to your workflow and to your personal preferences, the happier uh, you are. And we know this because we've asked people a lot. Um, so, resharper or no resharper, as long as you're happy, we're happy. Here's another question. Let's see, here's from Larry. Any plans on making it easier to see what changes that are to a function without multiple steps to open up and commit and then find the file, compare to changes, and then locate the feature in the compare? Like something similar to the peak help or peak definition. Yeah, so that's a good question, um, and we actually got some feedback on that, and uh, we have been thinking about enhancing that experience. So uh, the feedback we got there was, oh, I actually want to very quickly focus on a specific piece of code, a function, or something, and then be able to, you know, see, you know, what went uh, with that function, like, you know, go back and forth in, in, in you know, in history, but focused on that function, right? Uh, to see like what happened, uh, what is the history of that function, and you know, what, what might have uh, you know, introduced a bug or something. Uh, so that is something you know, uh, we, are, we are looking into. Uh, we still don't have a, you know, a great answer for, uh, but we, have, we, we keep that into our backlog and we'll get to that as well. Oh man, that, you know, that, just, that just sparks an idea like, how cool would it be that if you want a method on even a line of code or on a method or on a class or on a whole file, you could just scroll back and forth in time. There's a slider. Yep. Yep. Go back in time and look through your commits. You can see who did what, what it used to look like in time. Is that sort of, is that sort of, I guess that's sort of the question here, right? Yeah. That, I'm, just, I'm, just, the, I'm just looking at, you know, we all see movies yeah. where they, they build these, they, they, they program in 3D on multiple monitors and, you know, they, you know, and already report and whatnot. It, yeah, it seems a little bit like that. Yeah. yeah, and that is the feed, the exact feedback we got, right? Like, I want to get that rich experience that allows me to, you know, very quickly, you know, use that slider to go back and forth uh, and see what happened there, right? And um, yeah, I mean, that is a part of the richer experiences that we are really looking forward into getting into as as soon as we are done with our. Uh, base, right? So we want to make sure that we have a strong, solid base for Git functionality inside of the product, and then from there we will start to look into integrating uh, richer experiences. And that is that is just a, a good example there. All right. So um, we're kind of coming to an end here. Um, I wonder if uh, before we hang up. Uh, do you have any closing remarks? Is there anything you want to tell the audience? Like, what should they go do? What should they test? What is the, what is the, what is the one thing you want uh, them to leave with here, Dave? Critique? Yeah, um, sure. And I kind of touched upon this before as well. Uh, for for Visual Studio and Git and the Git experiences and for GitHub, um, our team is is working to build up functionality and build up features. And we want to GA this, right? We want to GA this as soon as we can um, so that the entire Visual Studio developer community can use it. Um, and right now, we're in a state where we, we think we're close uh, and we think we're getting there, uh, but, there uh, but the feature is still in preview. And we want to get feedback to, to 
from the developers, from all the different kinds of developers, Mads, as you said, like every single developer has a unique way of, of doing something, of uh, interacting with a feature. And, to, and we want to understand that, um, we know that like the way that we do stuff is not necessarily how other developers use Visual Studio. And we want to know if we're missing anything, if there is any critical features that are preventing us or that, that we should build out and prioritize before we actually GA this functionality to make um, to make sure that every developer and every kind of developer who uses Visual Studio um, can benefit from it. Um, and so that's, I guess, my ask to the entire audience is to, to try it out. Let us really know what's working and not working. And every single release, we're adding new functionality to it. So if it's not working for you today, give us that feedback and switch it off if it's not working for you. But in the next release, try it again. Try, turn it on and try it again because we've added more features. And let us know then if, if, it's, if what we've done has benefited and improved your experience in any way or not. Um, so that's just my request to everybody. Thanks. Awesome. Sejo, do you have anything? Yeah, I, I would like to add to what Pritik said. Um, so basically, you know, whether you are uh, an existing Team Explorer user or whether you are um, a command line user or whether you are using another tool, you know, um, your feedback really matters uh, to us. So please, 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 you know, try the new get functionality and, and share your feedback. So we are trying to, you know, uh, build something that is usable by, you know, uh, our, our all of our users. So we would like to make sure that we get that broad perspective. Uh, so please try the, the the new feature. We are actively working on it. Share your feedback and uh, stay posted because we are continuously adding uh, fixes, adding features, uh, as Pritik mentioned. All right. Well. Thank you so much, guys, for coming on. This was uh, super awesome. Um, I'm a big fan of what you're doing. You're doing amazing work. Uh, so thank you. And I can't wait to see what uh, is coming out in the next preview. Um, so, yeah. And so that concludes our uh, fourth episode of our Visual Studio Remote Office Hours. We'll be back uh, same time next week, so Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, as usual, we will tweet out links to the uh, event so you can join live and ask a Q&A. Thank you so much and uh, have a great day.